I'm excited about the FCF. I, I think uh, you know they're they're looking at this as an experiment. Um, they're all but wearing lab coats. I mean, they're being very careful about everything they do, and uh, they're get, they're going to have this in a bubble. The thing that, about SCF that's different, and and I know people that are on this uh, broadcast that are, that are following this are interested in the game behind the game and kind of how a team's constructed and all those kind of things. I, I know y'all are going to talk about how to build a team on Friday night, and that sounds riveting. That sounds fascinating to me because I love that kind of stuff. You know, the FCF, the, the players on the teams will change every week based on fan voting. You know, the plays, the plays that are called, the players that play, all those kind of things are up for, uh, you know, fan dis, um, decision-making as, as part of the online platform they have. And so it's an interesting thing. Again, these guys are not obviously your college stars that, uh, you know, or, or the NFL is competing with to sign these guys, but they're all competent players and it's going to be a way of watching football. That's very different. It's almost like Madden in real life. And I know that people talk about that and they, you know, that's not, this isn't the first time that kind of, uh, you know, comp- comparison has been made, but I'm excited to see it. And it'll, they'll all, all their games will be broadcast on Twitch. There's not, not going to be any secrets about how and where to find uh, their games and uh, all those kind of things. I think, especially after week two, week three, when fans get to watch them, the play them, players kind of get to learn them, get to know them a little bit more. It's going to be really interesting to watch how the teams evolve and how the votes are cast and what plays go on. I mean, I don't think they're going to be throwing long on every down, but maybe every other down. I mean, you hand this to the fans, it's going to be a little more exciting. So it'll be fun to watch, and uh, I'm excited to kind of see what happens. And you know, again, as as you know, Rick, you especially have your your thumb on the pulse of the direction of football and how technology is changing it. And and you know, I would that's one thing I've always valued from our relationship is how tuned in you are to that, and I always learn from you in that regard. I think this could be a direction that we haven't seen, and 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 is eventually maybe even have implications in the NFL. As a purist, I hate to say that. But it's still true, and you know, ultimately, this is entertainment. This is about trying to keep people glued to the TV or whatever their uh, you know viewing mode is of choice. And so, there may be some implications here that uh, we we see down the road in the NFL. I don't know, but this is their chance to kind of see it, kind of on the ground level. I'm really excited. It's starting in about a month or so, and uh, you know, month I guess maybe two two months. I'm not sure exactly about the schedule, but it will be a lot of fun. I know there'll be uh, kind of selling the rosters and training and that, and that kind of thing soon. So something to keep uh, on your calendar and so to be looking for, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting thing. I, I'm intrigued. I, I hope it works. And I think the XFL, if they ever do come back, could probably take a, a, a note or two from what they're doing, because you take a look at this modern day era where you have the YouTube sensations and the overnight Instagram success. Well, now you've got a league here who's kind of, gearing towards the football audience but then also incorporating like i think um mike tyson and and richard sherman are two of the coaches i believe they got some other celebrities involved so and from my understanding that how it does differ from the spring league at least is they've rented out the entire hotel so there will be no other you know public outsiders coming into the hotel john is, is this a concept you think uh can work here in the COVID era yeah, I think the, you know the interesting part of it is what you're saying. Like when when you take everybody kind of behind the scenes, you know, with this, and and you're you're saying to them like, okay, hey, in one area, you know, literally they are are repeating repeating what a, a video game, you know, sort of gives you in terms of hey, we're gonna let you pick the uh, the color scheme, you know, we're gonna let you pick the you know what the logo or the whatever team you know type thing is. You know, and and then, hey, now we're picking the roster and how do you want to do it and, you know, things like that. You know, it does give a different optic to it. And the other optic that you talked about, there are some of the guys that we've seen that you could be maybe not just the prototype for true professional football, but the guy that has 300,000 followers and is a good player. Mm -hmm. That guy now has a chance to where he's using kind of both sides of the business, you know, to manipulate his way into being the featured player, right? So it is a, you know, a kind of football meets Tron, you know, kind of weird, you know, kind of scenario there to say like, you know, hey, you could take a guy and suddenly make him the featured player on the team 
even if he's not considered the feature player on the team. You know, so like all of those things of the interaction with the guy who caught seven passes, okay, that's great. And he doesn't interact and he's not socially media savvy. Mm -hmm. And the other kid who had one catch for 30 yards might end up being the star of the show because he's all over the place posting 24 seven, right? I mean, you know, like look no further. We brought that kid to camp last year. Who's got probably the most followers in the history of pro sports as a kicker. That kid would dominate. I mean, it wouldn't be shocking if he's in that league because yeah. if you're that smart to be able to kind of, you know, do every time you're doing something, you know, you're, you know, you're able to link it and connect it on social media. You know, like if Starbucks wanted to do that with any of us, you know, we'd welcome, you know, uh, you know, brought to you by, you know, we're good. You know, it's, a, it's a fascinating concept, though. Like yeah. when you think about it, for a startup league, you're using the players now to help promote, you know, draw those viewers to the Twitch. I would imagine they should allow these guys to text and tweet mm -hmm. and, and do all that in game because it's like so opposite of the grain of what NFL does that right. people would love that. And well, like, that's why I said that if you look in the end zones where they're putting those big billboards or whatever. Don't tell me that you can't then be creative enough to connect with one of these social media platforms. And when they score or when they make the play, come do your little 15 second TikTok dance literally <laughs> on there and have it going live as you're going. Yeah. Like I said, I'm more than willing to volunteer Neil to come on each week and do a TikTok <laughs> dance as a wrap up. <laughs> Oh, you didn't that's know that's how selfless of you, John. I, I really appreciate that, but that's you, you, thanks for you didn't, letting you me didn't know that that's how we're ending the show today. <laughs> Neil didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs>